Hello everyone, we are finally here to the epilogue of Ox Excellent Tom. Do you want to understand? Yes, of course you do. You sort of creatures always does. You were out last night, was, well, in short, was something. You live probably, you learn definitely, you made choices, you had to. And after all this time, here you still are. So after the recuperation from ragers and houses of horror, you are out walking the street of the place you may as well start calling home. You change out on your party gear, opting on your old hoodie standby, if it's the mood you're in. You're not really looking to meet anyone new tonight, but well, like you wouldn't say no probably, but you are not a jonesing for it, only a little. It's complicated. After an indeterminate amount of minutes of aimless walking, you look around and where you've ended up, you seem to have wandered into a dirt pile. You know this dirt pile? It's Foster's corpse field. Ah, oh, how do you get here? You wonder, you're pretty sure you were just on the other side of the city, with no particular desire to come anywhere near here. It's probably fine, just your deep, innate, bro-honing skills taking over your goddamn body. Just little friendship things. You look around for your pal father, picking down into a few of the other deeper holes. You might as well say hello since you are here and all. Holy shit, that again. Curiosity killed the cat, but you definitely get a god more than nine lives at this point, to be honest. So you shrug and slide, not gracefully, down into the shiny hole. So shiny. Thoughts here is nowhere to be found, but there is a window down here. It's almost completely unearthed and doesn't make much effort to free it the rest of the way. At first you think it might be some cool new trash you could make art with, but when you look closer, you reconsider there's a whole ass room as you can see through the pane of glass laying on your feet. That's weird. Weirdness isn't a typical art deterrent for you, you. But usually there's at least some causational coherin coherence. Doors, walls, walls, round rooms, you manage to use funny parlors in ditches. Is there a latch or something? Should you do polite little knock? There might be a friend there. Damn, you will really go for some friend right now. Is there a protocol for approaching ditch window? Allow me to stop you there. I am timeless being of the void, but even my patience has its limits. Fun is fun, but uh, this fearless navel gazing is no longer necessary. Coming from behind the shadow of what of that narrative text is so very hard to see your face. Oh Jesus, I changed! We are here, finally! <laughs> we are back here. You aren't sure where you are and you surprise it a little nerve wrecking. You look over your shoulder at the window, you guess you just fucking came on true. Daltonia sky is framed by the edge of your dirt hole and a knot in your stomach losing a bit. Hopefully that means this is a two-way portal. And there's that bulb guy. You turn to look at your surrounding and oh, there's someone here. The guy you just heard, you assume? He doesn't look like any other aliens you met. Oh, I'm not an alien. Oh, no more than any of us are alien to each other. In fact, nothing is alien to me. The real concept behind that term is alienation. Being forced from the witch is natural. Nothing is unnatural to me. I look upon all realities as equal, inviting and approachable. It's you, my dear, who are out of place. I could see what uh, I could see that even if I was not omniscient, which I am. Okay, so I'm not an alien with no horns or case sign. Though he's definitely not a troll, whoever he is, he seems to be white, just really white and brown, and his outfit is admittedly kind of dupe. <laughs> Are you my father? <laughs> I always thought I was like, you are the creator of all of me and everything in this universe. Looking at him really ramps up your friend does. He just got this quality about him that you got to get with you. Take a step toward him almost without thinking about it. Oh, my apologies. The composure has become extraneous. Let me take care of it for you. He snaps his fingers and your knee buckles. The force of the universe presses down on you like G-force. You blink and somehow... He is there, immediately arms are stretched to catch you as you fall. He stares you to the chase launch and you drape yourself weakly on it. Please, have a seat. The emotional transition might be a tad uncomfortable, but I know you handle worse. You are not quite a soldier. Allow me to be the first to say that I am very pleased with your work. I knew exactly what you were going to do, of course. And most of your work was, in fact, my work. Regardless, congratulations are in order. <laughs> so are you Andrew? <laughs> What is this guy talking about? Your work? 
You try to pass what he's saying, but your body's still shaking from whatever he just did to you. And you start to think in here. You suddenly sharply don't feel friendly toward him at all anymore, or toward anyone. The boy left by that feeling is freshly gaping horror. It's like, ooh, you thought you were caved it itself. A black hole, a personality eating your body up from the inside. You try to pull your shit together. It's not like he means business. There's no time to lose it, no matter if your sense self is shuddering. When you're truly left lacking yourself, you surely can't, uh, can't, with any honesty claim to believe any of this was by your own making. Crash landing on a hostile alien world, surviving the impact, dragging around half-broken body and somehow not immediately being eaten by local phone. Did you learn an alien language just by thinking about it very, very hard? <laughs> right, Malik says something about that, that you were speaking perfect Adelia, and it was kinda weird, but you kinda just accepted it. For no reason. <laughs> for no good reason! That's your world deal. Your friends all accepted your quits. That's what friends do. You say to convince yourself as much as to prove it to him. So many trolls, so many fascinating aliens, and all of them wanted to know you. Do you really think you manage that on your own laurels? Were they all drawn to an indefinite or something uh, je ne sais quoi? Well, yeah, you had this whole emotional arc, you scoff self-confidence. You grow as a person and help others to grow. The white tax guy doesn't make expressions, but you get the feeling he's looking at you pityingly. I found you sweet, honestly I do. I don't intend to cause emotional injury, I'm just telling you the truth. Never lie, you will find. It isn't like you don't have admirable qualities on your own, of course. You have made quite a valuable vessel for me, and I appreciate that very much. I could not have done it without you. I'm not only joking, absolutely could have done it without you. It is just infinitely more fun to do these things together, is it not? What? What things? What did he do? What did you do? You hope you didn't do something that will fuck over all your friends. But when you try to think about them now, the bonds you felt before come up all twisted. Without the artificial friendship drive he's given you, pushing you forward, you're not sure what those memories are supposed to feel like. You close your eyes and breathe. You try to remember why Popia touched your face after you touched hers, her clothes tra trailing down your cheek, how Tizia's left trusting as you keep watch. How Tagora gave you a chance when he was something in you you didn't even see yourself. How not? That long ago, you got the cheater handle of nine extremely friendly J Block Block. Those moments are like the memory of warm to you now, blurry, cold, and out of reach. Was all that for nothing? Your heart is a chance. Don't worry so much about it. I simply needed some dots connected, some pieces in place for my next move. Choose whichever metaphor suits you, whichever way you frame it. Because of you, everyone will soon be in their right place. Shit! What have you done? Your head starts to spin and you think you might cry, so you pull your hood over your head to block out the harsh green of the room. You try to imagine still smell a little like Malik. Doesn't. It doesn't smell like anything really, but you remember what it smelled like at first, and you hold on to that. It was real. You tell yourself your friends were real, and that you fell for them, and with them was real too. You are so afraid for them, and as guilty as you feel for craving it, the fear just makes you need those feelings you felt before even more. You're clawing desperately for the euphoria of caring and be careful. Who cares if you had that fast food? Eh. <laughs> Who cares if you had uh, if your hand was false? You felt it and still mattered. Matters! You remember how you felt watching Kish perform, butting in a line of righteous anger, and also how you drunkenly commiserated with her later when no, that's not right. That didn't happen. If so, you still remember how hangover you were the next day. Just when you started making sense of things, the whole fucking world shifts under your feet again. You just cannot keep up with all this moving real estate in your brain. Ah, uh, yes. All of the resets annoying, but necessary. Uh. <laughs> You're just indescribably bad at keeping yourself alive and in one piece. You weren't quite as adept at befriending aliens to start out with. My intervention was necessary, necessary to keep you on the right path. Time and space meant very little to me, but I had to move quickly and again, repeatedly. That's why it's so incriminating no taking here, befriend and impressionable young upstart. Their anger, a cold beer, inspires some bandits. You know how it is. You have to throw the temporal spaghetti at the wall to see what sticks. Oh, there it is. That's the panel. I'm sure if you look back, you will be able to see traces of my death touch. So a few memories may have slipped through the cracks here and there. Timelines tend to collapse in on each other if you aren't careful. 
ability to mentally withstand such a band and so often is a testament to my acumen that is uh, choosing you for the task. You email almost called off a few times, which I must say I was not expecting. You almost listen to the silly little girl who likes to dress up in a big ghost and cosmic trouble. Uh, I actually don't remember which one was that. And there are always some bystander and up call you in the crossfire. The one with them shovel, for instance, I doubt his mind will ever be the same. A pity. You sit up straighter and clench your hands into fists over the course of his pompous monologuing. You move past fear and grief and onto that gloop chuffing rage. How dare he do this to your mind, to your friends' lives? What was so important that one white orb asshole had to fuck with the destinies of everyone you've grown to care about? There are answers out there, and you deserve them, and so you demand them. Adorable. Yikes. You shift on the charge, launch as you better high height your famous legs for this creepy wrong fucker. Okay. Oh, calm down. All of you. Oh. And your adherence to societal expectation and archetypes. Perhaps one day you could just learn to take a compliment. Besides, I was being condescending. So you demand answer. He sings theatrically. You aren't sure where the noise is coming from. He doesn't have a mouth. How is he even talking? How the fuck does he say anything work at all? I knew you would, but I found explaining myself incredibly tedious. Suffice to say, I am a man with many boards and fields of play. And although there are countless ways to move the players around those boards, some are doubtlessly more entertaining than others. I actually think I know who he is, I just um, I don't know enough to know who he is. So he's a character from Homestuck, right? Uh, just that I, uh, he's like, uh, have a lot of powers, I don't know. He, he has a weird name, I don't remember. Bulb? B Mr. Bulb? <laughs> Mr. Bulb? <laughs> no, no I, I don't remember. You were simply one pawn among many. I won't bore you with the details. Doubtless you are aware of the greater contextual framework of this story. The hell you are! You aren't aware of the jack shit your head is full of question marks. Question or something mark question marks, probably. Oh of course how toddlers of me see yet another unfortunate side effect of the limitless conversing with the narratively with the narratively limited. He taps a thumb and a forefinger to his orb. Perhaps it would suit you better to understand gradually. And when I say gradually, please understand that I mean it. You won't be living. But yes, I do believe that this will cry, clarify some things for you. This way, please. He opens another door and just here inside. There's a light coming from it. But it still gives off the vibe of that closet door in an unfamiliar bedroom at 3am. You're afraid, yeah, but you want to understand even more. Oh, it's the laptop. Uh, sorry, it's the computer room. It's with the um, with the web comic uh, open. You stand up and take a step. Oh God, Jesus Christ! You stand up and take a step, conscious of the movement of the mouse in your legs, with the rosy sheen of your friendship, hypnosis, or whatever the fuck you did to your gun, and this is. Whatever the fuck you did to you gone, the sensation of moving your own body feels high and important. Yours. There is a probably a version of you that will try to turn him down, or that will be fired or run to take a nap on this surprisingly comfortable piece of antique phone. You even consider rushing back to say goodbye to, your, to somebody, anybody, at least. But no, you know, there isn't time to click through all that bullshit. Those tributaries flicker in your mental periphery, so tangible, you can also see yourself choosing one. But you pull your focus back to your present and looking right at the orb. You just have to trust they'll remember you because the you you become after this journey, after all this friendship and growth and death and time. You need to understand. You owe it to your friends, but even more, you owe it to yourself. You found your river, you're going to see where it leads. So you follow him. Ah, it's the computer. I knew it! So first the quest is right after you read all that shit, all the 80,000 pages. <laughs> I don't remember, it was probably last, no, I don't remember, well, 8,000 pages, I don't remember. Sit here, please, in the interest of expendency, I will leave you, your own device, while I go deal with unexpected, but entirely unwanted guest. It shouldn't be too hard to pass out the truth on your own. All you need to do is read a brief webcomic. Brief! This is the fucking end! Guys! Holy fucking shit! 
He opened the fucking page. So I'm guessing she's uh, he's the Bobby is going uh, uh, to fight uh, the director, right, or something like that. Are we done? <laughs> Let me tell you about you. <laughs> you read a show, little web comic. It's huge the web comic. We're not gonna read well stuck. Oh come on, guys! I want to fucking read it. Eight thousand pages. <laughs> You can read it by yourself. Why have to do it for you? Look at this shit. There's so much shit in it. Oh god. There's even so many options. There's so many doom timeline. How the fuck can I do this? <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of High Wasp Friends Sim, and this is the beginning of Homestuck. As you can probably understand, I'm not gonna uh, pursue this webcomic. Uh, as uh, I'm trying to avoid uh, avoid it because it's not really I want to say it's not a game but I think uh, mm, I think uh, you have to bully me in order to read it but I don't think you're ever gonna reach that amount of bullying for me to read it uh, out loud like that like like the old old uh, parameter I'm doing so what the hell it's like uh, f off <laughs> f off you young uh, youngling anyway um, so. Uh, I, I guess the ending was unsatisfactory uh, to, to us to do the best of us, if you recall. Uh, it's funny how I play everything with the opposite direction. <laughs> it's like, let's start from the end and go to the start. <laughs> oh, look, look at me doing the things uh, into a chrono correct chronological order. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's it. That's the lovely collection we got here. And uh, it's been fun. Some uh, some chapter were fucking great. Some chapter less. Uh, this it is. <laughs> this is it. We finally did it. This is the end. Ohio swap, fancy. I hope you enjoy, and I hope you subscribe. <laughs> Maybe I'm gonna get more more. There's actually Francim 2 if I'm not wrong. <laughs> I saw it somewhere on Steam. I, uh, I think it's a free chapter on the first one at least. So I may gonna read that maybe in the near future or maybe even more far away than the near future. I don't know why I'm gonna schedule this. Anyway, um, goodbye. <laughs>